what's up? Welcome to your Buckeye Rush Hour for a Friday, March 22nd, 2024. Let's fix this background real quick. Background. One second. Uh-oh. There we go. No. There we go. Adjust this camera. Felt like I could have done all this before, right? There we go. All right. How's everybody doing on this fine uh, Friday afternoon, evening, whatever you might be doing? Ladies and germs, appreciate you joining us. Uh, drop your questions and comments in the chat and uh, we will get to them. Any topic you want is on the floor, and uh, we'll get into it. I'll keep an eye out. I don't I don't think Jeff or Sean will be joining us, but who knows? Maybe they'll surprise us once. Um, uh, quick programming note, we will be back Sunday night, um, God willing. So um, at least I will. <laughs> who knows? I never know what to expect from Jeff and Sean. So um, I will be there, and I will be drinking, um, hopefully not too heavily. Uh, it is a Sunday, Sunday fun day. Um, today we're talking recruiting, got a ton of updates, talking about the visitors who came into town this week, who are coming over the next uh, month, month and a half. Then we've got a bunch of official visits already logged, scheduled for May and June. So those are huge. And uh, so we'll get into it. And uh, maybe if there's time, we should probably talk about Jeremiah Smith a little bit. And the wide receiver room, uh, since we just had a bunch of interviews with those guys, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, Thursday. So um, sit back, relax, pour yourself a, a cold one, and uh, let's talk some Buckeye football. So let's get into it here. So far this month, we have had uh, a handful of visitors. Uh, March 5th was Luca Gilbert, the Ohio tight end. Uh, also, the Ohio corner, Dwayne Galloway. They were on campus March 5th. March 7th was Ohio tackle Nolan Davenport, Indiana defensive end Damian Shanklin. He did earn an offer on that visit. So um, an edge rusher from the Midwest will take it. Uh, also, March 7th was uh, Kentucky defensive end JV on Campbell. So uh, getting some edge rushers in early, that's key. See if we can we can lock them up. March 16th to the 19th, so last weekend, you had Ohio State commit Tavian St. Clair, the quarterback. Then you had um, Florida wide receiver Vernell Brown. He's the one I wanted to talk about a little bit here first. Um, he made his first visit. He has two trips uh, scheduled. So he visited on this past Tuesday. I call him Vernie Three Sticks, Vernell Brown the third. He is a University of Florida legacy, so you're going to have that battle um, since he's in he's in the Orlando area. Let me pull up his numbers here real quick. Um, Burn, where are you, Burn? Yeah, Orlando. He's 5'11", 170, four-star. Uh, they got him ranked nationally number 169. Uh wide receiver from Jones High School in Orlando, same high school as uh, Seven Banks. I thought there was one more dude that came from Jones. Anyways, uh, so anyways, he's a 9-4, 9-4 composite. Um, so a solid four-star there, number 12 wide receiver, number 14 player in the state of Florida. He has two crystal balls to the Buckeyes. So, yeah, um, he has been to Columbus before this trip, but uh, it was important that he got to watch on this trip. Uh, Brian Hartline worked with the receivers in spring practice. Um, uh, Vernie Three Sticks says, uh, it was really good. I enjoyed it. I got to learn more about their system and exactly how I fit in it. Uh, you can see their success through his coaching and the approach and mindset of the receivers. Now, uh, Vernie will be back in Columbus the weekend of April 1st. So he's going to continue to grow his connection and his relationship with Heartline and the Buckeyes receivers. So uh, that definitely helps. Um, also in town was uh, DeCorey and Moore. I want to talk about him 
a little bit deeper here. So um, the Corium Moore is the 511 to 175, so similar size to Vernie Three Sticks. Um, but he's out in Duncanville, Texas. He is a five-star, almost a perfect prospect, a 9989, number three player in the class, number one receiver, number one player in Texas. And you know how we love our Texas receivers, right? Um, he is currently an LSU commit, but obviously he's uh, playing the field, to say the least. Uh, so um, DeCorian uh, made his first visit this week to the Buckeyes, uh, and there's a growing confidence inside the Woody that uh, the Buckeyes are very much in the mix to flip more from LSU, but also Oregon and Texas are in that battle as well. So a uh, little three-headed monster on the flipper. Um, more visited with his trainer this week, not his parents. So the Buckeyes need to get him back to Columbus with his family for an official visit in May or June. That's the next, the next task they need to check off. Um, Buckeyes are hoping to sell, uh, to Corey more on how his unique skill set is different from the other players in the wide receiver room. Um, so he got to watch Brian Hartline's group this week and that was the highlight of his visit. Uh, now he can start also building those relationships with our line and the other receivers like Carnell Tate, Brandon Ennis, Jeremiah Smith, those guys. So uh, the Buckeyes are definitely in this one. Um, it's a long way till December though, as we know. So uh, those are the two big receivers I want to talk about. Also in town this week was uh, Texas D lineman Landon Brink, uh, Texas defensive end Gus Cordova, Ohio linebacker Justin Hill. Um, he's actually kind of a DN linebacker. I think he's going to end up being an edge. Um, he plays linebacker right now at uh, it Winton Woods, I want to say. Anyway, uh, we'll come back to that. Texas quarterback, oh, that's a 2026 guy. Uh, Texas quarterback Brady Hart. I don't believe he's received an official offer yet, but also 2026 Florida quarterback Will Griffin was on campus. Uh, I'm trying to stick to the 2025 guys because there's so many of them. And if we if there's a quarterback that gets an offer, I'll let you know. Um, then uh, March 21st, so just on Thursday, you had uh, Ohio safety Cody Haddad. He's from St. Ignatius, uh, current Wisconsin commit. He was on campus. And then a new quarterback, a 2026 from American Heritage down in South Florida, 6'2", 195. Um, he's not currently rated yet on 24-7. Uh, his name's Dia Bell. Uh, don't believe he did get an offer. Okay, so he did officially get an offer uh, yesterday at, at practice. So, and he got to see, you know, Ryan Day work on the quarterbacks, Chip Kelly, everybody else. So um, then uh, this weekend, so starting today, you got uh, Tavian St. Clair, obviously back on campus. He's going to be here every week at least once a week uh, to interact with the other 2025 20, guys, especially the receivers, you know, and O line and he wants to recruit the shit out of this class. So, and he's, he's the, uh, the ringleader, you know, first man in almost. So you got uh, Tavian St. Clair in this weekend. Then you got Texas wide receiver, Kalik Lockett, like this guy, um, New Jersey wide receiver, Desi Jones, uh, Penn State tight end, Andrew Olish. Uh, Ohio offensive tackle and current commit, Carter Lowe, coming down from Toledo. Um, New Jersey defensive tackle, Cole Breeler. Uh, North Carolina defensive end, Trajan Odom. He's a big dude. Huge, huge visit here is Florida linebacker from Vero Beach, T.J. Alford. This guy is a must-get for the Buckeyes. They got him projected at playing the will. So uh, he's set to make his decision on March 30th. So that's a week from Saturday, tomorrow. Um, so interesting, he has the Ohio State visit right before making a decision. I like that. Um, you also have 2025 Texas linebacker Elijah Barnes visiting this weekend. <clears throat> then uh, Georgia linebacker Jaden Harmon. Texas corner and current Buckeye commit Devin Sanchez coming in with the whole Sanchez family. Please welcome them with open arms. Um, New Jersey corner, Deshaun Stewart. Washington, D.C. safety, Kanoa Winston. Uh, 
Illinois quarterback. Oh, he's a 2026 guy. Jonas Williams. I got to see if this guy is. I don't think he has an offer yet. Let me double check. One second before I open my big mouth. Uh, see all 15. No, no, no offers from Ohio State yet, but he is visiting. So who knows? He could gain an offer this weekend. Uh, then you got some other 2026 guys, and that's it for this weekend. Then next week on the 25th and 26th, you have a Florida quarterback, Noah Grubbs. He's visiting. He's a 2026 guy. I'm just checking to see his status. He's from Lake Mary, so that's over there by Jeff. Uh, see if we can get Jeff to swing by and, uh, you know, drop a little sh a few shekels in his pocket. I uh, don't see an offer yet, so maybe he'll get one when he visits. The Buckeyes like to do it that way. Um, now, this visit coming up next week, 27th to the 28th, is actually going to March, April 1st, is Jordan Davison. He is the California running back. He's planning a four-day visit. Who knows, that may be postponed if the Buckeyes don't get a freaking R RB coach in there uh, immediately. And it could be com <laughs> completely canceled if it's not the right RB coach, right? Uh, so Jordan Davison's bringing like the whole damn family uh, from Cali, unofficial visit, so paying out of their own pocket for a four-day excursion, seeing the sights and sounds of Seabus. Uh, then you got... Uh, this is the 27th and 28th of March. Indiana tight end Brock Schott. Buckeyes are in heavy on him. Uh, then Ohio tackle Jaden Clark. Then Florida defensive tackle Jarquez Carter. Then Ohio defensive end Cedric Works. I don't believe he has an offer yet from the Buckeyes. Then California linebacker Abdul Sanders. He's from modern day, teammate of Jordan Davison. Then Florida linebacker Gavin Nix. Then Ohio safety Trey McNutt. Um, the well chronicled legacy, and that's it for the twenty twenty five guys. Now coming in at the end of the month, no next weekend, uh, twenty twenty five guys. We have Ohio running back Bo Jackson, uh, Florida wide receiver Jamie French with two F's, Texas wide receiver Dalen McCutcheon, Illinois wide receiver Taylor Taylor. That's redundant. Um, California wide receiver Philip Bell, Florida defensive end London Merritt, Florida or Texas linebacker Riley Pettyjohn, Texas corner Dorian Brew, formerly of Ohio, Maryland safety Fahim Delane, heavy crystal balls to the Buckeyes, uh, Texas safety Jonah Williams, California safety Jaden Hudson, Virginia running back Savion Hyder. California wide receiver Caden Dixon Wyatt. Oh, that's 2026 guy. Sorry. Um, trying to stay on the 25s. Now, coming up in April, we've got uh, the spring game is loaded, but uh, April 1st to the 3rd, got New Jersey wide receiver Quincy Porter, Florida wide receiver Bernie Three Sticks, and New Jersey offensive tackle Malachi Goodman, Florida offensive lineman Caden Strayhorn, Florida, or I'm sorry, New Jersey defensive end Derry. Darren Ikenagbin, Ikenagbin, sorry, I know I fucked that up. Uh, then you got uh, 2026 Tennessee quarterback Jared Curtis also visiting there. All right, uh, April 5th, you just have Kentucky defensive end Javion Campbell coming back for his second visit. April 6th to the 9th, you got Florida wide receiver Winston Watkins Jr. Then Texas wide receiver Taz Williams Jr., and Virginia athlete Messiah Delone. Now for the spring game, I'm just going to focus on 2025s again. <clears throat> uh, Tavian St. Clair, of course. He, he just he's probably got his own chair, you know, reserved. And then Virginia running back Jeffrey Overton. Again, depends on who the running back coach is. Hopefully, we have one by then. Texas wide receiver Andrew March, Oklahoma tight end Nate Roberts, heavy Buckeye lean. Iowa offensive tackle, Nikolai Brooks. Maryland defensive tackle, Darion Smith. Uh, Georgia linebacker, Jaden Perlow. Uh, Maryland corner, Blake Woodby. And current Buckeye commit, but not sure if that's going to stick or not. Uh, top 10 corner in the country. Texas corner, Devin Sanchez is returning again. 
current commit, Florida offensive tackle, uh, Micah Smith, North Carolina. Yeah, that's it for the 25s. All right. May 31st. So these are official visits. We're starting in end of May, early June. Um, May 31st, June 2nd, Texas wide receiver Taz Williams Jr. Then Texas wide receiver Dalen McCutcheon. Texas defensive end Landon Rink. Kentucky defensive end J.D. On Campbell comes back. That would be his third time this spring, summer. Then uh, Florida linebacker T.J. Alford. Hopefully he'll be a Buckeye commit when he comes for his official. And then Florida athlete Jeffrey Overton. Um, he's out running back. June 7th to the 9th, you got Ohio running back Marquise Davis. This is, these are official visits to uh, Indiana tight end Brock Schott. Oklahoma tight end Nate Roberts. And Buckeyes do plan on taking two in this class again. Uh, then North Carolina defensive end Trajan Odom. Uh, winding down here, uh, June 14th to the 16th, California wide receiver Philip Bell. Alabama tackle Micah DuBose. Uh, Florida defensive end London Merritt. He also has crystal balls to the Buckeyes. Uh, Indiana defensive end Marion Dye. I look for him to be a strong Buckeye lean. I haven't seen any crystal balls yet, but I think uh, he's from Indiana. I believe he's, is he from Elkert? I'm pretty sure. So very close uh, to Ohio. And then you got Blake Woodby coming in for his official, Maryland corner. And then the Virginia athlete, Messiah Delome, coming in for his official, uh, also his second return. Then you got uh, the big man. Big old lineman, tackle out of North Carolina, David Sanders Jr. coming in for his official June 21st to the 23rd. Devin Sanchez is coming in again that weekend. And then, uh, oh, yeah, the other Buckeye cornerback commit from Alabama, Naeem Offord, is making his official visit to Columbus. So, how's that sound? Does that grab you? I'll take a drink of water and pop in the chat, see what's happening. Hmm. That's just water, damn it. All right, so let's get in here. What's happening, folks? How's everybody doing, ladies and germs? Odysseus is the first one in, one in. He says, OH, PC is back. He says, I, O. Odysseus says, any word on Davison visiting? No, I don't have anything. Uh, I was going to do a quick search real quick while we're talking um, just to see if there's any updates, but yeah, I got nothing. I do know as of right now, he has not canceled. So that's as of this morning. So that's all I got for you. That's not bad information. Uh, Pam Mills, I, I, it is a big deal, though, Odysseus. I, I, I'm glad you made that point because, A, Davison says that he wants somebody he already has a relationship with. Now, who is that, right? Um, let me pull up his commitment list, or I mean his uh, offer list. And, you know, he already has that crystal ball to Texas, which is, I would say, premature to say the least. Um, so yeah, Alabama, Texas A&M, Texas, he does have offers from schools like Florida. I'm just looking at, uh, some of the bigger schools here he has offers from. He has, uh, unofficially visited Penn State, um, offers from Washington. I haven't heard anything about Scotty Graham when it comes to running back coaches. I haven't heard a thing about Scotty Graham and I wonder why. He's at a Power 5 school, and it's now a Big Ten school at Washington, right? So what's the deal? I don't know. Maybe he's just not interested. Uh, he's got a bunch of offers, but he did officially visit uh, Penn State. I'm just looking for relationships. He's looking for people he has relationships with. I'm not seeing um, schools that have a running back coach that we're, we're interested in, you know. But – yeah, we'll stay on that one. Yeah, Pam says we need to get a running back coach soon. I agree. I will say it's not the end of the world. It's not a, not a perfect scenario, but it's not the end of the world if we don't get one till 
like end of spring ball. So like middle of April, it's not the end of the world. They're not really doing much anyways, you know, working on, on specific little, you know, formational things, you know, um, and just, they're not really doing scheme stuff and playbook stuff yet, you know? So we'll see. Um, I would like to have somebody soon just, uh, to ease my troubled mind, but I agree with Japan. I would like one soon. I thought we would have had some, somebody by today. Um, you had Gillespie from Alabama get a nice little pay raise. Thanks to the Buckeyes interest. Then you had DeMarco Murray using the Buckeyes to get another pay raise there. Um, we thought both those were serious contenders. Then you had Stan Drayton, current head coach at Temple this week. That fell through with the uh, um, buyout situation. I don't know. Seems like I think it was around $5 million or so, the buyout. So the Buckeyes are being a little cheap there. Um and maybe maybe uh, Temple wanted a little, little bit more than that on on the uh, back end. Who knows? But I really thought that this would have been a, a quick like one week process. But Ryan Day said it on Tuesday. He said, you know, he's not in a rush. They're not in a hurry um, due to recruiting timeframes and stuff like that. I would say, yeah, you're not in a huge hurry, but you need somebody before these recruits start canceling their visits, like Jordan Davis. You know, so I'm saying if you don't get one by the end of next week, I, I would imagine Davison might cancel that visit. So we'll find out. Uh, Odysseus says, don't feel we have a good track record in Orlando. No, no, we don't. Um, Mike Brewster. He went to like uh, a Catholic school over on uh, the west side of town. I used to live down the street from it. Uh, then you had seven banks. Didn't really work out. Um, yeah, Orlando is not a big Ohio State hub. It's always been like, um, actually, they've been keeping dudes home, surprisingly, at UCF. Um, and kids down in Lakeland. You know, Lakeland's a big powerhouse. Apopka, you know, uh, those two schools surround uh, north and south of Orlando. And they've always been like Florida schools. Um Florida State schools, you know, like Warren Sapp is from Apopka, went to Miami. Um, a lot of the Lakeland kids used to go to Florida, uh, like the um, the Pouncey Twins, guys like that. So, um, yeah, Orlando, I don't know why, uh, but yeah, we, I guess the Buckeye recruiting efforts just kind of skip right past. Uh, the top half of Florida and just go right down to, to South Florida, you know, just fly right over top of Orlando. So there's not a lot of high end ball there being played in my opinion. I don't know. It's been a while since I lived there, but um, there are some good schools, but no, no like powerhouses. Like you would say, you know, like, like state champion level teams at, at any level of Florida high school ball. Um, but yeah, uh, Odyssey says Decorian Moore has insane speed. Yeah, that dude's a stud, man. I was just gonna gonna go check that out. Uh, what's he run here? Ran so in spring of 2023. That was his sophomore track season. He ran a 10.63 twice. Now they say it's wind aided. I don't know how much is the wind blowing him. <laughs> Hey, blow me. Uh, no, uh, but he ran ran those times twice, a 10 6 3 twice. So a year ago, uh, 28 or 21.38, 200 meter, 21.53, 200 meter. So uh, that he's in uh, Texas 6A, uh, Duncanville. So they're high end, high quality ball and track. Um, as a freshman, he ran in 11.09. Two years ago, so this dude's loaded with with the rockets. Um, yeah, yeah, nobody's catching him, and that's kind of what we don't have. Uh, when when I talked about Hartline comparing him to the other guys in the room, Jaden Ballard's probably the fastest guy, but he's not even getting on the field, you know. So 
DeCorian Moore is bringing that track speed, you know, to the position. We really, I don't know, have we had a, a track guy recently? That's not Olave. That's not Wilson. Um, that's not my, Michael Thomas for sure. I mean, I'm just late naming off Ohio State receivers in the NFL. Uh, track guys, I guess J-Mo kind of. But after the knee injury, I'm not sure he still was running the same times. I mean, he was still a burner, yeah. But um, but even J-Mo, you know, used most of his speed at Alabama, right? So, um, yeah, we we need a we need a track guy to take the top off the defense, keep them honest, you know, keep those safeties deep, and uh, and hopefully double cover him and stuff and open up things underneath or leave him leave him in single coverage and watch him roast a freaking corner. But yeah, I like to him more for sure. Uh, let's see. Pam says Devin Sanchez has been trying to help flip him too. Yeah. Yeah. Those Texas guys are, are helping out and that, that Sanchez family is doing a hell of a job. Uh, <laughs> we really uh, should, should cut them a check from the athletic department uh, in their recruiting efforts. Uh, Cause they're, uh, they're getting the assist on a lot of these, these recruits. Um, hey folks, as you're coming in, please uh, hit the like button. I greatly appreciate it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel as always. Um, it just helps other Buckeye fans find the show. And if you share it, that'd be even better. Um, hang, hanging in on the chat here. <clears throat> Excuse me, miss. Um, PC says, oh, back it up, back it up. I skipped a bunch. Uh, if you guys haven't seen Justin Hill's tape, do yourself a favor and watch it. Dude can run down running backs from behind. Yes. Um, you can see that on the video vault at the buckeyecast.com for free anytime i have every single 2025 offer i have their highlight tapes uh in the video vault so check it out at the buckeyecast.com it's easy to find uh no ads no commercials and again free 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 um PC says, what position does Trey McNutt play? They have him as an athlete. He's a safety, probably. Um, yeah, he'll play safety in at Ohio State. Jeremiah, what's up, Jeremiah? He says, what's up, Joe? Oh, let's go, Buckeyes. Good to hear from you, Jeremiah. Hope all is well. Yes, we plan to be back Sunday night, so hopefully you guys will join us. We'll get uh, Jeff and Sean in here and uh, get, get their takes on uh, spring practice thus far and uh, everything else that's going on. Maybe we'll uh, open the can of, of worms with uh, Sean on the 14-team playoff. Really see if he wants to go off. Complains more. Uh, Odysseus says, I thought McNutt was a corner or a safety. Uh, safety. For sure. Dorian Brew's the one that's kind of up in the air. He could be a corner or a safety. Um, he's a bigger dude. He's going to put on weight. Um, I think he's going to be a safety, but he's he's track. He has that track speed, though. So I think Dorian Brew could play either one. But McNutt, definitely a safety. Uh, PC says, what are the odds that James Laurinaitis is the tweet was a silent, de silent commit from TJ Alford? That very much could have been. That's uh good detective work there, PC. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if uh he got if TJ is committed, but he is still gonna take visits. So again, even though he's not in South Florida technically, Vero Beach is like middle of the East Coast, like dead ass middle. Um uh I'm always apprehensive, but um, he seems like a, a smart kid. Got a got a good head on his shoulders, and um, we'll see. You know, I think we get the commitment next week, and then just a matter of hanging on to it. You know, again, December is nine months away, man. <laughs> Brace yourselves, buckle up. Um, but yeah, PC, I agree that the odds are very good that we got a commitment. <clears throat> Uh, PC says we can go after both, but I would choose Marquise Davis because he is an Ohio kid. Are you talking uh, versus Davison? I don't know, man. Davison's good. Um, I think 
with the loss of Tony Alford, we're probably going to be looking at a, um, I, I think a Bo Jackson and a Marquise Davis class. I think you just settle on the in-state guys. Not that you're not that settling's bad. I'm just saying, you know, I I don't think Davison is going to be super happy with whoever we hire at this point. I don't think the fan base is going to be extremely happy with whoever we hire at this point. Because, like Ryan Day said on Tuesday, he has a lit an ABC list, and I think we're on the we're down to the D list at this point. Um, Looking at at these coaches like uh, Looper, yeah, a Looper, you know, like a like a caddy. Uh, no, uh, Curtis Looper. He's the uh, running backs coach for Missouri. Um, he's a good coach. I'm not. I don't know. He. Where's his freaking resume here? He's older. He's fifty eight. I believe that's older than uh, than Tony, Tony Alford. Uh, so how long is he going to do it for at 58? And does he want to move up, you know, to the, to an OC or even be head coach of his own program at some point? Uh, 95 to 97, he was a GA at Stephen F. Austin. He's from Texas, so that's good. It's a good uh, – Recruiting ground, right? I mean, if you want, if you want to choose a recruiter just for their region, I think Texas is probably a solid start. Texas or Georgia, um, but then uh, reading his his resume here, uh, McKinney High School, Texas. He just coached running backs there for one year in ninety eight, ninety nine to two thousand one. Texas A and M, Commerce, not the real Texas A and M. Uh, he, he was DBs and assistant head coach. 2002 to 2004, New Mexico RBs, 2005 to 2008, Oklahoma State RBs, 2009, 2012, Auburn RBs, uh, 2013, 2016, TCU, wide receivers and running backs. That's an odd combo. How do you do that? And that's actually he uh, continued 2017 and 2019 as co-OC and wide receivers, running backs. That's a hell of a freaking day, man. How do you find that time? And then 2020 to today, he is Missouri's running back coach. Um, he was football scoops uh, running back coach of the year. Um, he helped remember Cody Schrader, the running back for Missouri, the walk-on that, that transferred from division two. He uh, made that guy the leading rusher in the country. So, um, yeah, what they let's see what they run for. Yeah, Schrader was the leader, leading rusher in the country, yards per game, one hundred and twenty-five per game. So, um, yeah, so good coach. He hasn't moved around too much. Some of the other guys, like Markel Blackwell, was another guy. Um, he's he's moved around a lot. I'm not. I'm not really. Uh, pumped on him. I just, I question Looper's age, you know, being 58. Are you, is, are you going to have the energy on the recruiting trail? Cause remember that was the issue with Tony getting his ass out there on the trail. And two, are you going to have the energy in practice? What are you bringing to the practice field? So uh, I'm not 58 yet, but uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be super energetic. <laughs> like, like you need to be you know, around 18 to 22 year old kids. Um, anyways, um, uh, PC was saying uh, Jordan Davison would be great, but again, Callie in modern day, seen that movie before. Yeah. Um, Pam says, do you think Caleb Downs is going to go back to Alabama? He had Alabama stuff in his IG story today on Instagram. Now it's gone though. Kind of confused on that one. LOL. I know. I, I think uh, people tried to make a big deal out of the Caden Proctor, you know, pulling the U-turn and going back to Iowa and back to Bama. Um, I I don't see I don't see Caleb Downs doing that. He's locked in again. When you go back to his recruitment coming out of high school, the Buckeyes were right down to the wire, you know, 
it was a really close call between Bama and Ohio State. Um, so Saban leaves, retires. Obviously, uh, he wanted to play for the GOAT, one of the best defensive back coaches of all time, too. And uh, Downs went to his second choice coming out of high school. And uh, the Buckeyes have shown on defense that they have – Put, put it together. They've, they've fixed the issues and they put it together for, for a couple of years in a row now. So you can see, you know, the proof in the pudding, you know, on the field, in the film, you can see that the Buckeyes have the right scheme in place. And he played in the virtually the same defense at Bama. So he's playing the same deep safety, the adjuster role um, here at Ohio state. So no, I don't think uh, Caleb Downs is going anywhere. Um, People like to make up shit, you know, just for drama. And it's it's spring, you know. There's no games to talk about, so let's make shit up. <laughs> so, yeah, I, it is funny that uh, he, I didn't see the Instagram story or whatever it was uh, from it from Caleb Downs, but maybe he's just messing with people. I don't. Know. He doesn't seem like a game player. Though. He seems pretty down to earth and like. Brass tax, give it to you, you know, straight. That is a little weird, but I'm overall I'm not too worried about it. Uh, Odysseus, Odysseus says, I think that was just BS from Bama and Cheaters fans. Yeah, probably. Uh, they're the the Cheaters fans were the the big pushers of that hype um, a couple of weeks ago, saying Caleb Downs was was uh, in uh, Tuscaloosa, or was it Monday? Might have been Monday. I don't know. Weeks, weeks and days blend together. <clears throat> Disius says, heard Downs never had OSU on his Instagram, so didn't remove anything. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's always, always the big sign, right? When, when a kid removes his current school from his Instagram or his Twitter profile, it's like, oh shit, something's wrong. Quick, throw money at him. I know what the problem is. But yeah. Oh man. Um Billy, Billy makes it in late to the party. Hi, folks. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Billy, welcome back. Welcome in. Uh Pam says, um why do you think Blake Woodby won't stick? I've heard some rumblings that um he's looking at other schools. I do need to check if he has visits planned elsewhere yet, but uh, I just heard some some rumblings, you know, uh, nothing concrete, but it sounds like uh, he might he might not like the fact that the Buckeyes have the uh, top two corners in the class. You know, he might not be one of the third man in, you know, he might want to get out. So that's that's my thought there. PC says regarding relationships how in the world would a relationship with a position coach trump the college football team profile that's crazy it does it definitely does uh we've seen it so yeah i i don't know it depends on the kid you know some kids commit to a school for the head coach see alabama and and their run, you know, committing to to the the goat, the greatest coach of all time. Um, some kids commit for the position coach, some for the school. I would say most commit for either the head coach or the position coach. And you know, I'm surprised that Tony lasted nine years. That's really unusual. So um, he was probably due for a change. We were due for a change. I think especially with the, some of the recruiting issues lately. But, um, yeah, that's what they say. Recruiting is all about relationships. And it's it's about the relationship between your regional recruiter, because it's not always your position coach. Like Tony had South Florida. But so he helped recruit a lot of dudes, not just Brian Hartline, you know. It wasn't all, all him. Um, and Alfred – had uh well I think he had Vegas. I'm pretty sure he got Lathan Ransom. He had Virginia a little bit. Uh so kind of all over, you know. But um 
yeah, relationships are key. I mean, it, it's it's important. Billy asks, has Drayton come up as the RB coach hire? Yes, we talked about that, but uh, that fell through the other day. And uh, the the buyout seemed to be the issue. Suddenly, you know, Ohio State's acting like they don't have freaking money. But I, I agree, five mil just for a buyout is a lot for a running back coach. I mean, we do have to kind of take a step back and think about, you know, take some perspective here. A running back coach is not a make or break position, in my opinion. It's not like a offensive line coach or a defensive line coach for that matter. You know, I think running back coach is down the list of priorities when it comes to position coaches. So obviously your quarterback coach being Ryan Day, Chip Kelly, pretty solid start there. Uh, but running back coach is not high on the list of priorities. That's why it's not going to be the end of the world if we have to wait until April to get a, a, a coach, you know, and you don't want to get just a guy to fill the position. You, you want to get the right guy, you know, just getting a warm body. You could, you could have done that last week. You know, you want to get the right guy. And again, recruiting is key. Recruiting is the number one aspect of being a position coach anywhere, and especially at Ohio State. So, if, again, that's why I, I question that uh, um, Looper guy being 58 years old. Is he really going to get out on the trail a lot? You know, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, Billy, to answer your question, we did talk about Drayton. Would have been a good – Good pickup, but uh, I don't. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I think it's pretty much a dead deal. Uh, Pam says, "I thought Davison was crystal ball to Texas. He is. Yes, uh, Jordan Davison has one crystal ball to Texas. But sorry if I didn't mention that um, when I was running through there. Uh, I don't. I don't put much credence in it, though. Uh, matter of fact, I put zero credence in that." crystal ball prediction that was made a while back. And um, I think it was even made before he, he scheduled the four day visit to Columbus. So uh, what else here? PC, PC says, who is the RB coach at Ole Miss? Isn't that where Q came from? Is that guy available or even worth a sniff? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I would think if he was worth it, that Ryan Day would have, would have overturned that stone. Um, but I, I really don't know that guy. Um, I would interview Quinshawn first to get the get the uh, info. The info. Um, Billy says, "Sounds like we have a better chance of making the right hire after this season." Could be, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. If you can't get a guy in here before summer, then I don't know. Do you leave it open? Hire an extra, I don't know, not a special teams coordinator, please. No, <laughs> no, I don't know. I guess you could get a one-year stop gap, get one of these guys that is on the C or the D list, you know, for one year. And then go after a bigger fish, you know, after after the season in January or something. But yeah, um, let's see. Odysseus says that would give old Lane something to really cry about. PC, yeah. yeah, he needs one more thing to bitch about, doesn't he? Fucking Lane, Jesus. Odysseus says Devin Smith. Last I remember. Not sure with Devin Smith. Talking about the track guys? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was a track guy, but he was more of a high jump guy, Devin Smith. Um, not a speedster. Uh, PC says no track guys since Campbell, maybe Rambo. Oh, Kenyon Rambo. Yeah. Got his highlights out there on the video ball, by the way. Check it out. The Buckeyecast.com. Yeah. Paris was, was pretty freaking fast. Um, PC uh, continues on. He says, uh, we need a burner for sure, but he needs to be able to withstand a hit. Q 
keep hold of the ball. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You got to put some, put some body armor on them when they get into the, the program, coach Mick, you know, throw some weight on them. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely need a dude that can take a, a hit. Uh, Billy says Justin Hill is my favorite edge offer, a true Jack in the making. Jack Hill, is that his name now? We say that Justin Jack. Um, Billy says Jackson's rated higher than Davis. Yeah, they're both four stars, but yeah. Odysseus says Benedict Alfred joined a real dumpster fire. Cheaters already lost D line coach a few days on a few weeks in the job. Yeah. He's out celebrating that, that job offer, didn't he? <laughs> uh, PC says anytime you get the chance to take an RB named Bo Jackson, you do it. No questions asked. I agree with you. Uh, Billy says agree, PC. PC says, with the NCAA carpet bombing about to happen on the cheaters, Tony might find himself in the head coach chair. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. <laughs> Alfred's playing playing chess. Long, thinking long term, right? That would be hilarious <laughs> if, if Sharon and everybody got whacked. That would be funny. Odysseus says, Tony as head coach won't go well. No, that's not going to go well. Billy says, I'm rooting for it. Uh, PC says, I'm telling you guys, dark ages are coming for the cheaters. Well, it, it depends. If uh, if the NCAA can just hold it together for a little while longer till we can you know, take care of the cheaters, give them all the penalties they need, and – obliterate them just hold it together NCAA lock arms do whatever you have to do uh, just hold out we know the NCAA is crumbling it's going away it's going away soon a year maybe two at the most just carry out this one last act for the betterment of everybody thank you uh, back to the chat uh, Billy says, I see Oregon becoming our biggest conference rival moving forward. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's legit. Dan Lanning's got a got a little bit of a monster out there, kind of hiding out there in the in the great northwest. Uh, so we'll see uh how how they can stack these recruiting classes and uh, still maintain that that culture and stuff that he's building there and be interesting, that's for sure. Um uh, but yeah, we we definitely will probably see them in in Indiana for the uh, Big Ten championship this year. PC says Oregon would be a good friendly friendly rivalry, but it'll never replace the gut wrenching bundle of nervous energy around the game and all the hate that goes along with it. That's, that's a fair point. Yeah, um, maybe you can build up Oregon into a secondary rivalry, kind of like we have with Penn State. You know, it's not a real rivalry, but it is a rivalry to some degree. Um, except they never play night games when they come to Columbus for whatever reason. But anyway, yeah, Oregon is going to be good, and that, that's going to be a good rivalry. Odysseus says the whore, <laughs> the whore <laughs> Michigan about to experience the equivalent of Viking raids. Ooh, that sounds dirty. Billy says a thousand percent PC. Billy says, what about the heart line taking over running back recruiting until we figure this out? I guess you could do that. I guess. It's worth a shot. Um, you definitely don't want Ryan Day just focusing on one position group. You want him to continue to be that CEO. And so far, it's like he's managing that that running back room. So uh, you want to kind of, I guess, tag team it. That makes sense. You know, give Hardline the recruiting aspect of the running back position and then give Ryan Day, I guess, just the practice time, practice aspect of the running back position. I'm I'm good with that. But then it also stops Ryan Day from doing the 
CEO walk around, you know, and, and try and hit up each position group, you know, so you kind of lose that. Uh, but I like the idea, Billy. Um, PC says we will upgrade from Tony Alford. Mark my words. Your words are marked PC. Thank you. Um, I, yeah, I agree, especially in the recruiting aspect. It definitely, it will be an upgrade, even if we have to get a one-year stop gap. Um, PC also says, I take either Pe Pepe or Scotty, both would be an upgrade. Yeah, I, I think if you're going to go with somebody that's minimally experienced or maybe does not have all the qualifications you're looking for, go with the former Buckeye, I guess. Screw it. See what happens. At least they can, when they're recruiting, their recruiting pitch can be part of, you know, I played here, I've done this, you know, I know what it takes, I know what it's like, I can relate to you, that thing, you know. But yeah, uh, PC says, got to be some NFL RB coach that's out of a job, I might look there. Yeah, I would, I would consider an NFL running back coach, but you need a guy that – um is going to come in and and not just, you know, you need somebody that's dedicated to the job because it's different in college, you know. Um it's it's a it's a 365 every day job. It's not you don't get summers off, you know, like the NFL. So finding the right guy out of the NFL might be challenging. Um Odysseus says, yeah, track guys. All right. Yeah, track guys. I'm down with track, guys. Pam says, right about now, right? Oh, she says, right, but how are we going to get kids to come in without one? Yeah, that's that's the challenge. Um, the kids probably do want to know who their future position coach is. Um, again, back to the relationships, so that's a good point. Uh, you got to get somebody. I think you got to get somebody here by summertime, you know, before these official visits start taking place so uh, yeah excellent point pam thank you uh pam says i don't think we can wait till after the season yeah no we can't wait we got to get somebody in here but it could be after spring that like end of april is probably where i where i draw the line tyler what's up tyler good to see you uh, question, if we fired Alfred in January, do you think we could have gotten Gillespie or Murray for the running back coach? I say yes. I think so. Um, because you wouldn't be yanking coaches out of spring ball right now. You know, um, Ryan Day should have pulled the trigger. Um, he had, I believe Alfred went to the coaches convention. That's where you go when you're looking for a job or if you're looking to hire somebody for your staff. Um, Alfred was there and so the writing was on the wall. He and Ryan Day knew it. It was clear. Um, the cheaters put forth a three-year contract. I think it was like 850,000 per year. The Buckeyes returned with a two-year contract, similar salary. So it's an easy, it's an, I mean, the Buckeyes obviously went low ball, low balled him and hoped that he would just hang on because uh, he's been here for nine years. So, uh, but from a financial point of view for Tony, I would have taken the three-year deal too, except I would not have gone to the cheaters. <laughs> that's that's uh, one bridge you do not cross, but uh, he did it. So I say it's kind of personal. Uh, Billy says probably Tyler, but yeah, I to answer your question, Tyler, if I didn't, uh, yes, I think if we fired Alfred back in January, um, when you let Corey Dennis and Parker Fleming go, then yeah, I, I think we could have gotten um, anybody from that A list of Ryan Day. Um, Billy says, I just think Oregon will be our biggest challenger for the conference title. I, I'm with you, Billy, I'm right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Their team is built to win, win those tough slobber knocker games. And, um, I'm not a big Dylan Gabriel fan, never have been, never will be. He, he'll, he'll again, he'll get you by. 
let's see what they have uh, after this year at quarterback. You know, I'm not I'm not so sure about um, what's his name from from Detroit. Or is, is he from? He's from Michigan. I know that. Um, Dante. Um, back to the chat. Stephen Cherry says not sold on Oregon's QB. It's like I just read that. Exactly, Stephen, right there. I'm not a Dylan Gabriel guy. Um, Odysseus says really interested in the matchups between our wide receivers and BIA during the spring game. Yeah, yeah. How much we will see of the of the starters? Probably not much. You're not going to see a lot of Denzel, IGB. Uh, you're not going to see a lot of Caleb Downs. Um, Latham Ransom, you definitely won't see much of him. Can't afford another injury. Wide receivers, though, you will see uh, the young guys getting out there. Probably not much of a mecca. You will see, obviously, Jeremiah. You're going to see Brandon Ennis um, running at the slot. You're going to have Carnell out there for sure. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, young guys on offense and going against some you know, Jermaine Matthews are going to be going against him. Um, Calvin Simpson Hunt, those guys will probably be lining up at, at corners most of the time. But, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Um, Billy says, agree, Stephen, but not entirely sold on ours either. Our quarterback, yeah. At fair point, Stephen agrees. Um, yeah, I yeah, we're going to have another QB battle that's going to go into fall camp. So just sit back, relax, enjoy it. I appreciate everybody hitting the like button as we wind it down here. I'm going to finish out the chat. Uh, PC says, regarding Pepe or Scotty, I mean, upgrade, yes, because of what you said, I played here, but also because they will actually recruit with bigger, not much from Alfred from what I hear. Yeah, yeah, I, those guys are much younger. And uh, obviously going to be into the recruiting game. Again, Scotty Graham is at Washington University of. You know, that's a Power 5 program, and he's recruiting for them. Uh, I I took a quick glance at, at his um, recruits he's brought in. Nobody fantastic. You know, Washington doesn't really crank out running backs at this point. But I got to think Scotty's got to be an option. I would, I would kick the tires on him again if I was Ryan Day. But um, uh, Billy says, I think our old line will be good. It's going to come down to the to Brown or Howard. Yeah, exactly. Quarterback battle. Um, Steven says, will Jeremiah see the field this year? Day doesn't have a history of playing talented young players early. I, th I think yes. Um, I won't say, Steven, I won't say that Jeremiah starts week one. I think he definitely plays week one and week three, week two, week three, week four. I think he plays in all those games. I'm not sure he's going to start the the question. I, I get your point about day's history, but uh, it's about Heartline. Will heart time, Heartline rotate? Will he rotate four guys or five guys? Because I think he's going to have to have a four man rotation if you want to get Jeremiah on the on the field regularly. Because you know Carnell's penciled in as a starter. Mecca is going to move him around uh, to the slot, to the outside. Ennis is going to be in there. You know, he's a second. You got to remember, Carnell and Ennis, they're in their second years going into this season. So they've they've kind of earned their stripes. I know Jeremiah is a freaky guy and, you know, got a stripe off in record time. I just – I think – you got to have a four man rotation in order to get all these guys fed, you know? Um, but yeah, he will definitely see the field in, in, in a big way. I think, I think he, what, what did I estimate last week? Yeah. I, I think he plays in every game. I think he plays in all 12 regular season games for sure. Uh, Odysseus says, I feel three-year contract for RB coach reeks of desperation by the cheaters. Yeah, I agree with you, Odysseus. Um, yeah, they really wanted to stick it in, you know, really stick it in the ribs 
out of the, of the Buckeye fans and Ryan Day. So they, they had their shot and they took it. Uh, PC says he doesn't have a history of that, but then again, he's never had a J.J. Smith. J. Smith starts booking, okay? I don't know if he starts, PC. Uh, Billy says Smith has a body like Metcalf in the NFL, bioengineered. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, Pam says if they don't start Smith there, we'll, if they don't start Smith, there will be a lot of ticked off people and he might end up in the transfer portal next year too. It's not going to sit and wait. I can guarantee you that much. Right. That's the other side. Uh, Brian Hartline and Ryan, they both have to think about future recruiting in South Florida, right? You know, you might not be able to go down there if, if Jeremiah Smith sits half the year, you know, especially, you know, from all rumors and what we've heard, in practice from the other players, you know, wide receivers, DBs that have gone against him. From what we, we're hearing, he is above and beyond, like has to play. So, yeah, I think if you ever want to recruit South Florida again, you get Jeremiah Smith on the goddamn field. Yeah, and at least I, I think you got to play him in every game. I mean, there's only going to be a couple where – I don't even think he's, he would hurt us by being on the field against uh, the cheaters or against an Oregon or against Penn State. You know, I'm talking from an inexperienced point of view. I don't think he could do any damage. You know, it's not like he's a safety that's going to get, you know, tripped up or something. But, oh. yeah, I think you definitely play Jeremiah and early and often, but you got to, I think you got a, a rotation and Heartline does not like to rotate, you know? Uh, so we'll see, but I think, I don't think a four man rotation is that bad, you know, keep your guys fresh, you know, and get the young guys in there, of course. So anyways, uh, we're going to be back Sunday night, 7 30 PM Eastern. As always me, Jeff and Sean, we'll be talking to more Jeremiah Smith, we're going to talk more spring ball. I think we'll focus on – maybe we'll do a two deep for uh, the defense. We're going to do a quick uh, three-round draft where we each pick a – pick. Uh, we'll do just defense. We did offense weeks ago, and uh, we'll do defense this time if all three of us are, are a show, if, if Sean can make it with all of his um, time off. He needs more time off, I'm sure. But – Appreciate everybody joining me. We'll talk to you Sunday night. Please keep it locked in here. Make sure you subscribe for the Daily Blitz. Hit the Buckeyecast.com. Don't forget the video vault. All the recruiting videos are there for the 25 class and all your Buckeye legends, condensed games. I just uploaded all the condensed games for 2012, the entire season, 2013, entire season, 2014, entire season, plus the playoff games against Bama and Oregon. So check those out there. Free trial for three days. No credit card re required, no payment, nothing. Hop in there. And uh, if you like it, stick around. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Go Bucks.